Good morning, folks. We begin with one of the rarer quakes you're going to see. Felt across a wide portion of the UK and accompanied by five moderate tremors at high latitude in the Atlantic split north and south. Greece had some potential force shocking in the past 48 hours as well. You'll remember one of the foundations of star water. The sun isn't the only thing that erupts charged particles. When a hydrogen-rich CME impacts Earth's electromagnetic shield, our upper atmosphere bursts oxygen out to meet it. Now, while this has phenomenal implications for Earth's hydration, similar events happen on other planets and the ones on Venus. These hot flow anomalies are becoming more and more understood. Great article linked for you below. We're starting weather with the Indian Ocean. Guito, part of a perfectly visualized high and low for the southern hemisphere. Lows suck in, clockwise in the south, while high pressure pushes out, counterclockwise. Feed the big dog. Bit of a lighter day in Australia and New Zealand maybe some stronger events in the east over the next 24 hours. Next cell will break connection to the southeast Pacific high, will tail his convergence north up to the coastline. Lighter day in Europe as well, they'll take all they can get and don't mind that lighter system you see here. The US did not have such a light day. At one point you could not keep track of the tens of thousands losing power in about 10 different states. The system right now is over the Great Lakes, centrally, but it's the convergence tail swinging south that does the most damage. 90 mile per hour wind gusts, tornado warnings almost all night, and the cold is coming. The coast will be affected tonight. Let's quickly jump in closer to see that temperature delta we identified yesterday. Heat slides up the leading east edge getting sucked in and the counterclockwise drive up in the north pushes the cold back down the western back. Solar flaring not yet made another run. Not such a bad thing with our magnetic connection to the sun over at those departing spots. Even a couple tinier eruptions which didn't ring the GOES X-ray flux on the limb there were not enough to reinvigorate the radiation storm, which was minor only and lasted not long after the news. As for the sunspots, got two sets clearly visible here. The bigger one is the only one we'll analyze. In 171 angstroms they look quite connected, but here the umbral cores show two separate active regions each beta with gamma potential, and if that little blue positive spot grows up quickly, we could see a delta region there. As always, eyes on the limb for more incomers. NOAA's Enlil spiral showing the two shocks we expect coming, first one's officially late. NASA did a better job with the second wave in my opinion. Either way, we could see more geomagnetic storms today and into the weekend as the shocks are coming. Until then, the electron flux is recovering. Coronal fields showing the next negative coronal hole on the equator turning in. The best coronal hole views on the SDO come from 193 and 211 angstroms. Current conditions and some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.